Ladies and gentlemen, good, good afternoon. Today, I have the privilege of interviewing Isaac Herzog. Good afternoon, Sorayim Tovim, how are you? Fine, thank you, Rabbi Yoni. How are you doing out there in St. John's Wood? We are doing great. I think I look like I'm an Israeli today and you look like you're British because you've got your tie <laughs> and I look no, like- Bless of please, you know, Britain is Britain for me. <laughs> I remember when Simon McDonald was the British ambassador in Israel, my mom was all dressed up for His Excellency, the British ambassador and Simon, his wife and kids came in shorts. <laughs> and that's when we knew that England is changing. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Well, this is the privilege of working from home. But you know, it's a tremendous honor for us just to introduce my audience, somebody who needs no introduction. Today we are interviewing Isaac Herzog, who is the chairman of the Jewish Agency for Israel, and who is an Israeli politician, who was a member, uh, previously a member of Knesset, and also somebody who comes from a very illustrious background. You know, the name Isaac Herzog, it's such a special name to have. Your father was, of course, Chaim Herzog, who was the president of Israel. Your grandfather was, of course, the chief rabbi Yitzchak Herzog, the first chief rabbi of Israel. These are pretty big, big shoes to fill. That must be a very big, uh, carry a lot of pride for you. And also, I guess, a lot, of, a lot of pressure for, for your role in this world. But Look, you should know that I have a huge family with, uh, intertwined with British Jewish community I had an illustrious two uncles. One was Yaakov Herzog, was even a candidate for chief rabbi of Britain in the 60s, was a British, is a very famous Israeli diplomat. And my uncle Abba Iban, who was a legendary foreign, foreign minister of Israel, they all came from, uh, from England. So we never forget our roots. Absolutely. It's all about our roots. And it's a tremendous honor for me to have this chance to interview. So I thank you so much for, for giving me this chance. If I could perhaps uh, say in our interview today, there's really two sections of what I want to talk to you about. First of all, your illustrious family and your recollections of, of some of your amazing ancestors and um, your personal connection with the UK and also with St. John's Woods as well. And then perhaps we'll turn a little bit to your current role and your career. So if, if I could begin, obviously, you were born after your grandfather passed away because you were named after him. But, uh, right, exactly. You must have grown up with, with that name reverberating in your ears as the first chief rabbi of Israel. What can you tell our audience about him? What was he most famous for? Well, first of all, Rabbi Herzog impacted my life considerably because I, I still rem remember as a, as a four-year-old toddler in kindergarten where the, you know, the teacher yells at me and says, you're the grandchild of the chief rabbi, how did you behave like that? So that was about <laughs> the thing when I realized I'm somewhat of a different character. And uh, my, you know, my, I had a wonderful grandmother, the Rebetzin, Rabbanit, who had hosted throughout her life every Shabbat for Kiddush. People who came, a lot of people came from the English speaking communities. And her, her brother was David Hillman who was sure. the stained glass painter who, who was the windows of David Ilman cover your beautiful synagogue of St. John's Wood. And I, I remember him uh, in our home and I remember him saying and describing which synagogues he, he did the beautiful windows of. And I remember the word St. John's Wood as a child. Because that's like a name you can't forget. If I could just show our audience, I'm just going to share the screen. If I... If I could just show our audience for the benefit of those watching, these are some of the photos of the famous Hillman windows, which our synagogue is so proud to have them adorning the walls. They are the most magnificent stained glass windows and one of the largest collection of stained glass windows, both in the United Kingdom and I think across the Jewish world. And this was, of course, this was, of course, your great uncle. Yes, and he was a giant of a Talmud Chochem, and he, he, you know, we would say a word in the Bible and he would read the whole chapter by heart. Well, he was the son of uh, Rabbi Shmuel Yitzchak Hillman, who was the great Dayan of London. We just published a beautiful biography of his in, in Hebrew, and he was the great Rabbi, Rabbi Shmuel Yitzchak Hillman, and a hundred years ago, he dwelled in England as the big Dayan, and he wrote 22 volumes about all the origins of Judaism called Or Yashar and then made Aliyah and died in Jerusalem. And he was the big protege of Rabbi Isaac Halevi Herzog who brought him to be the chief rabbi and later on as a huge rabbi. So Rabbi, rabbi Herzog himself, you were asking about him. My grandfather was both a huge sage 
was a great statesman. He held a position, the highest position in, in the British mandate and then as first chief rabbi. But he was also a huge, huge scientist. So he wrote a PhD in, in 12 languages, including ancient Chinese, on the dying purple and the blue, in the talis, in the tchelet, the tchelet, the famous tchelet, which is the color of the flag of Israel. And he discovered as a, a world-renowned biological discovery that it comes from a snail in the shores of northern Israel, way before he last set foot in Israel. And so he was a great, great human being. He saved thousands of Jews from the Holocaust and children from monasteries. And he knew how to combine what you call the Udit with Democratic, Jewish and Democratic state. And he, he, he was the chief rabbi of Ireland before that and the Irish Free State, and he saw what it is to create a state in being, and therefore to create a state, what it is a constitution, what it is a religion and state. So he left a huge mark, and we, two years ago, we published a beautiful uh, biography of his in English called The Rabbinate in Stormy Days by Shaul Meislich. So it's on Amazon for those who are interested in the great story of Rabbi Isaac Halevi Herzog. Amazing. And the book that you've just published now with Rabbi Pini Dunn has actually dedicated in memory of my father, my brother Morris, and his wife Gabriella Golka were one of the benefactors of that book. And so that book, thank you. Tell us, the story of that, tell us the story of that book. How did that book come so, about? So what happened was that uh, about uh, two years ago, I met Rabbi Pini Dunner, who was, of course, an expat of Britain, and the, the rabbi of Beverly Hills, Young Israel. And, uh, and a previous rabbi of Saatchi in St. John's Wood. Yes, and he wrote some beautiful books and researches, and he, sh he gave me a, a book of drashot, of sermons of my great-grandfather, Rabbi Shmuel Yitzchak Hilman, on the Sefer Bereshit, on the book of Genesis. And it was so amazing to me to hold the book a hundred years later. I said, let's reprint it. And then they, we came to the idea of uh, writing a, a full-fledged biography, and we commissioned researchers, and the book is beautiful. It combines both. And it's the discovery of the most impressive letters with the greatest rabbis of, Ju of Jewish times of those times, like the uh, Chafetz Chaim and many others. And uh, we are proud that it has come now out in Hebrew. Hopefully we'll find ways to bring it out in English, of course, to all those who recall and remember. It's an amazing thing. We have a concept in Judaism that the greater your roots, the greater your leaves spread. And it's very fair to say that you continue this tradition from your illustrious great-grandfather, grandfather and father. You in your own right have made a huge impact on the Jewish people, had such an incredible career. Could you share with our listeners very briefly a summary of your career? I have I've been decades in public life, in politics. In public life, I was a, a partner at Herzog, Fox and Emman, a very famous law firm, which also had many English roots but I was a member of parliament of the Knesset. I was a minister in five different cabinet posts. I was leader of the opposition and I was candidate for prime minister in 2015 against Netanyahu. And uh, after, uh, uh, in 2017, after my party, the Labour Party decided that they want somebody else in a competition which was quite fierce. You know, I always say the divine providence Really, I mean, I was offered the position by World Jewry to lead the Jewish Agency, and it encompasses and fills my heart. This is the biggest Jewish organization in the world, actually commissioned 100 years ago to fulfill the Balfour Declaration, uh, deciding on the right of the Jews for a national homeland in, in the land of Israel. And we are the ones who brought about the creation of the State of Israel, David Ben-Gurion, led the Jewish Agency until independence. I sit in his room where he, for years and years, ran the, you know, the effort to bring about independence and then led the State of Israel until a new building was founded in 1962. So, you know, I get inspiration every day. Right. And then we were commissioned to bring the gathering of the exiles, to bring Aliyah to Israel, and we brought almost 4 million Olim until today and from over 100 countries. And this year, only 35,000 you know, immigrants from you know, 45 countries. And even during the corona, 1,200 wow. in quarantine and all, 
<laughs> from 15 countries. In the last generation, we have become the central pillar of Jewish global, global Jewish life, pertaining to connecting Jews to each other and to the state of Israel at heart. This is extremely important for us. And we have all these programs. We have Shlichim, Emissaries, and Shishinim. We have Masa, and we work with Birthright. And we bring in leadership programs, Hebrew programs, Jewish continuity and identity, and efforts to connect the people amidst turbulent times. We have, of course, a beautiful representation in Britain. We work very closely with the UJIA, and we're very honored to be partners with the UJIA in Britain as well as with so many other distinguished institutions. We put an emphasis on the British Jewish community, especially in these times. During the corona, we understood that we are leaders of the Jewish people, and we've initiated both a big fund in Israel to assist the, what the non-profit sector, the voluntary sector, and a big fund uh, to help Jewish communities around the world who are totally under huge pressure and distress. It's no secret to you. Britain has its own problems, it's known. We also represent the Jewish world in Israel by law and covenant. We have the biggest caucus lobby in the Knesset, Jewish people's lobby, and we have a special covenant which for, you know, compels the government to deal with, to speak to us and negotiate with us on the status of the Jewish world. And we believe that the state of Israel, being the nation state of the Jewish people, must offer assistance, support, and connectivity to the Jewish people all over the world, no matter which streams, which belief, and if they were kippah or not, everybody under the tent. Wow. I feel humbled to be speaking to you. and I'm, I'm so honored. And I, I, I guess a question that comes to my mind. Well, I am I'm honored to, to speak to the rabbi of St. John's Wood, because I came with my father in his first presidential visit in 1984. Since then, he came three times on state visit and was always hosted on, in Buckingham Palace by Her Majesty for lunches and dinners, etc. But when we came, we davened in your synagogue, and Rabbi Jonathan Sachs was the rabbi of St. John's. So we it have was a, a beautiful prayer, beautiful. Prayer. Absolutely. And myself and Diane Minstock and Rabbi Menzel, we look forward to welcoming you when you come I would love to, to London. That would be, be a great my honor. honor. That would be my a great honor. honor. My, my question, really, for you, I guess, is you know, You've had a, a lifetime both in politics, representing the state of Israel. You've also come from a tremendously special religious heritage of who your grandfather was. And I guess the combination of these two parts of your life, of religion and politics, they don't always mix so easily. And I'd be interested to know perhaps your views on the modern state of Israel in terms of Zionism versus <clears throat> faith and how we try and build bridges to make sure those two sections of society within Israel today, work together and flourish together? Well, I believe we are a unique nation and we serve a unique purpose. And we have a major mission statement for ourselves to serve the Jewish people and be a safe haven and build a modern thriving nation. We did. I think the recent coronavirus showed actually that Israel is actually impressive in the way it functions and delivers. I'll make the fact that there are many debates around Israel. The fact that it is religion and state together is a very complicated situation. I, my for one, I am a true believer in, in, in dialogue, in trying to resolve conflicts. I think we cannot permit ourselves as a nation to split up again, whether it be on the Kotel or any other issue. We must all find ways and means to accommodate each other. And al Kamsa ve Bar Kamsa, Havai Yerushalayim, on all the stubbornness, Jerusalem uh, was, de was demolished. And because of stubbornness and hard-headedness, the non-ability to talk to each other, respect each other as human beings. I mean, I think Judaism is a huge, huge uh, civilization on, uh, uh, into the world, of course, a great religion, but, but drives, I mean, many, many codes that have influenced humanity have, are all derived from Judaism. I recently even read uh, a fascinating book on how from within the realms of Jewish law and Hebrew law throughout the ages, uh, John Selden and many other philosophers in Britain in the, in, in, the, you know, in the 16th, 17th century were impacted. And this is really impressive. And I think that we should be proud of ourselves and yet debate. 
you can take my speeches as leader of the opposition, you will see that I criticize the government heavily. But that was done as part of being a member, leader of the opposition in a democratic debate where you have uh, even Muslim brothers, uh, members of the Knesset in our parliament, nowhere else in the world as such, in such a free spirited democracy. And we have to take it into account. I believe that the criticism on Israel has, has to be balanced and has to understand the unique situations in which Israel is, is faced with. And not only that, to understand the intricacies of the undercurrents of Israeli society and understand there's only one Israel which we need to love and respect. And yet we can argue and debate and speak to our brothers and sisters freely on all topics of the day. Oh, absolutely. You know, you obviously took over your predecessor in the Jewish agency was Natan Sharansky, who I also had the privilege of interviewing. And you are clearly two very different personalities with very different backgrounds and very different links to world Jewry. My question really is, should the head of the Jewish agency, should their role be focused on Israel, on strengthening communities and supporting communities within Israel? Or should it be more focused on the diaspora and strengthening links with the Jewish world across the globe? So it's a fascinating question. You know, Natan Sharansky is an icon. I love Natan and I work with him very closely. He still chairs our Shlichut Emissaries Institute and he does incredible work. And I encourage him during the beginning day, early days of Corona, to uh, make a video by us, the Jewish Agency, giving some advice on what it is to be quarantined after being so many years in jail in Russia. And he made it a beautiful, beautiful video. But the true story is like that. The Jewish agency originally represented the Jewish world in impacting Israel, in building the state of Israel. We are like a state within a state. We ran, we, we established El Al, and we established colleges, and we had Wingate Institute. And what's not, once we did 900 villages, towns, and cities in Israel, once we did Project Renewal, we then brought millions of Olim from, you know, Ethiopia, Morocco, and Russia, etc. In the last generation, we shifted our focus at the request of the Jewish world to strengthen Jewish identity abroad. And that's our main focus. We do have impact on Israeli society. We have youth villages and we have, we have many programs in Israeli society. And we work very closely with Karen Ayesod and uh, on many of such programs, which are also known to UJIAs and many, many uh, supporters in Britain. But our main effort now is to help the communities themselves. We basically supply services to the communities. Our shlichim are active in the communities. We have shlichim on campuses fighting on behalf of Israel all over the world, including in Britain, of course. We, we serve Aliyah, all, all requests of Aliyah are all done uh, by us in our offices abroad. And of course, we supply and help on security matters wherever it's needed in various communities around the world. And, uh, and we work very closely on twinning schools and partnerships between communities abroad and towns and villages in Israel. Anything that connects, we bring hundreds of kids on Massa program every year, as well as uh, on Birthright and Onward and many other programs. So all this, it's like a huge bridge that connects communities to Israel, vice versa. In a way, I'm helping, or we are helping uh, the community itself to be strengthened by the connection to Israel via, uh, via the Jewish agents. Incredible. You know, your career has been so illustrious. You, you've, you, you've had a career, both in the Jewish agency, but as you said, in government and five different cabinets, in politics, as the opposition leader. When you look back over the last 30 years of your life, what was your biggest challenge and your biggest highlight? So, you know, I had many challenges. I had, I had terrible battles. I had, uh, you know, every, every dirt under the sun. <laughs> and, you know, politics is a, is a dirty arena and it's all clear, you know. My biggest challenge was almost being Prime Minister of Israel. But truly, what engulfed my being. What satisfied me most, I was Minister of Welfare and Social Services. I took that ministry when it was totally derelict with no minister for four years. And I extended my hand and my abilities to 
you know, turn the place upside down and strengthen social services, revolutionize social services in Israel, which deals with the weakest point of a society. And, and in somewhat of a similarity, you know, it fills my heart to, to be a major leader of the Jewish people, to speak to communities. In the last month, I spoke to, you know, a huge amount of communities, I say from Turkey to Peru. And to hear the problems and the common denominators and Avat Israel and their connections and the challenges and the issues. And somebody needs to give, you know, a strong hand, a back, a sense of support, even psychological support. This I find as a very big challenge. And, uh, you know, uh, speaking, uh, I, I, I unfortunately, as, as, as a leader in Israel, I, I attended uh, many sad events, many tragic events, terror attacks. And I also uh, went on the, the Shiva to Pittsburgh in the United States, a community which dwelled comfortably for hundreds of years in the, you know, in the new world in, in America to, for, and realizing that American Jews are also prone to uh, racism and white supremacists and, and, and anti-Semites. So I think these are challenges of the day, of the era. And I still recall, one learns in history, when Jews were not allowed in Britain. And how, what a great contribution British Jewry has given to Britain and to the world. And as my father was, was a British officer in World War II fighting in the worst of battles, I am extremely honored to say that we are also going to tell the story of uh, those who fought in World War II, the Jews who fought in World War II and the Allies arm, Allied armies in a museum which is gonna bear his name now being built on the way to Jerusalem. Wow. Your father was the president of Israel. I remember, I, I heard there was a very special story when he met the Queen of England. Do you wanna tell us the story? Depends well, on the King David story? Yeah. Yeah. So that's a very nice story. So according to family, heritage and again please don't take it as a historical fact <laughs> so the, the rabbi hillman is a grandson of rabbi shmuel yitzhak hillman from metz that's in alsace lorraine in near strasbourg and he is a des descendant of a whole lineage of rabbis which goes all the way to rashi and rashi to hillel and hillel goes to king david so you know so the common knowledge is that we are descendants of king david so when dad came and mom came to Buckingham Palace for lunch, the Queen said, you know, we, the Windsors, we are known as descendants of King David. So my father replied, welcome to the family. And that's <laughs> how they started their lunch. Amazing, absolutely amazing. Well, I must tell you, for me, this has been a tremendous honor. Thank you so much for your time. Same here, Rabbi Yoni. We look forward to welcoming you in St. John's Wood. And to you you, with you, and of course, please convey my warmest regards to the Chief Rabbi, Rabbi Mervis, and the entire Jewish community all over the United Kingdom, and bless you all, and let's emerge healthy and strong from the current COVID crisis. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you so much.